Hello and welcome to part two of our AI series. Today we're going to take a look at our old code and adjust it just a little bit so that the AI chases after the player only when the player is within a certain range. And then we're going to talk about some of the ways that you can make that feel more realistic for the player or change it based on the game. As always, I'd like to remind you to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. It really does help. We're going to hop right into this. As you can see, I've added a player. I've put colors on the AI and the player because I just wanted to be able to tell the difference between the two. The AI is red, the player is blue, and our AI, if we play now, currently just moves around between points. If I go over here to scene view, you'll see that the AI, like we set up last week, moves from point one to two to three to four and then rotates back to one. Well, what we want to have happen is that when he gets close to this player over here, that we can move around, we want him to start chasing the player until the player gets far enough away that he returns back to his point system. It's a fairly rudimentary AI, but it is sort of a starting block for almost every AI um, that's in a lot of games where the AI wants to chase the player. See, like a zombie game, first-person shooter, anything like that. This is a fairly rudimentary behavior for AI, so we need to get the basics down before we can go to the more advanced things. With that said, we're going to hop right into it and we're going to go into our patrolling script that we had previously used. So, in this patrolling script, we are going to create a new variable, and this is just so we can look at the player. So just like before, we're going to do a serialized field. If you haven't already, and you don't have all of this stuff, I strongly recommend you go back and watch the first video. I will go through all the code and what all of it means in that video. Uh, but we're going to modify the code just from our first video. I haven't changed any of this. This is still the exact same. So we're going to make a serialized field, and in that serialized field we're going to hold a private game object that is just a reference to the player. That way, when the AI is moving around, it has some reference to the player, and we can know where the player is. Now, when we do that, because it's a serialized field, we need to go back into Unity, select our AI that has the patrolling script on it, and then click and drag the player into that serialized field. So now this AI knows exactly where that player is at all times. Next what we're going to do is we're just going to change a few things within the update function. So presently, every time the screen refreshes or does a physics update, we calculate the distance between the AI's current position and the position of the waypoint where it is heading. And if it's less than a certain amount, then we go to the next waypoint. Well, we want to add on to that and say, you know, if the player is within a certain range, like forget the waypoints, we want to go after the player. So how do we do that? Almost the exact same way, actually. What I'm going to do is we're going to almost copy this exact if statement. So I'll say if we have a vector 3, and we're going to calculate the distance of that vector 3. So if there's a distance between two points, and, and what are those points? Well, let's calculate those points. The first point we want is that the AI is point. So we're going to say this dot transform dot position. So that's our first position. We, we, we know where the AI is. But we want to know the distance between the AI and the player's current position. So we want to grab a player dot transform dot position. And then that's going to give us a float. And we can't just have a float and an if, so we need to have some type of modifier for it. So if that distance is less than some number, so let's say if it's less than or equal to 10, some form of code functions. Well, great. Let's do that. What code do we want to have happen when the player is within this certain range for the AI to start going after him? Well, what we want to have happen is that we want to have we want to set the destination of the agent. So we're going to say, the agent, we want you to go to what destination. So specifically, we, we know where we want to go. We want to go to the player, specifically to the player's transform, and then more specifically to the position of that transform. And that's going to set the agent's destination to the player's transform. And notice this is all with an update. So every time the player moves and the screen refreshes, 
so too does the player's position. So if you're running away from this AI, it will start following you. And that's an exact type of, of behavior that we want. So let's say we save here. We're not quite done with our code, but for the time's sake, let's say we save here and we go into our scene view and we drag our player to a spot where we know that the AI is gonna, gonna see them. You'll see that they start chasing the player. And we can move the player and the AI will keep chasing them. But what we don't have right now is a way for it to stop moving. So right now we're out of out of the range of 10. We're farther away than the player's transform position. So it's not updating where the player is. It's just moving from the around the last spot that it knows the player was the last time that if statement went through. The last time we were 10 meet units away from this this AI, that was our position. But it's not going back to our waypoints, it's just sitting at that position. And that may be what you actually want, right? You may want an AI that sort of goes and stands next to a spot where you disappeared. That way, like if you're hiding under a table in like an escape room or something like that, a game like that, that may be an AI that you want. You want the, the AI to come up and, and stand next to the table where you disappeared and and not let you out from underneath the table. Whatever it is that you want, that's that's perfectly fine. But for this particular case, we want this AI to start going back to the waypoints when we move away from the AI. If we move back into range, you can see that it starts updating again and it starts coming after us. If we move away again, it starts going back and forth to our last known position, the last time we were 10 units away from the AI. So let's go back into our Visual Studio. Let's put a check in for that exact scenario that we just discovered. So we're going to say a very similar thing. In fact, I'm just going to copy this because this is going to be the exact same code just with a flipped number with a flipped operator so this time we're getting the distance between the AI and the player and we're gonna say actually if it's not less than or equal to 10 if it's greater than 10 what do we want to have happen well, we want it to go back to its waypoint transition and if you remember down here we set our transition every time we iterate but we also set our transition at the start, and we set it up within this array so we could call it at any time. And that's really handy because we can just copy this exact same thing right here and set our destination back to the waypoint system. We're not iterating it. We're just saying, hey, go back to where you were going before the last time you saw the player. So agent.destination is equal to our current point and more specifically the position of that current point. So now if we save this and we come back here to play and we go into our scene view, we can drag the AI to the point where it starts following the player. But if we move far away, you'll see that the AI starts going back to the points. And this is the exact behavior that we'd like to see. Well, that's great and all, um, but normally people have some code that they want to have happen when the AI, you know, comes next to the player, you know, so so where 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 would that happen? So we're gonna code that up real quick. Um, I'm gonna comment it out because I don't have any animations for this. But let's just say we have the same type of scenario where we're getting the distance between the AI's current position and the player's current position. But let's say it's one unit away. Well. At this very specific instance, we can do code for an attack. Now, I don't have an attack. Um, for your game, you might have like player health that you do like, you know, you could do something like that where you take some of the health off the player. You could play an animation. Um, if you need any helps with animation, I'll put a link right up in the top right right here we do have a video on animation if you whatever it is that you want to do when the AI catches the player if you want the game to just be over you can do like a you can do a scene manager dot load uh, 
or you can make a UI element pop up, whatever it is that you need to have happen when the AI catches the player, this is the spot where you do it. Only when you are this section of distance away from the player does this code happen. And just incidentally, if you'd like to not move during the animation, let's say your animation has like um, a forward movement built into the animation, you would just drop this at the top of here and put everything in, in else ifs here for these three. So I want to go over a couple things that can really help you disguise this AI or edit the AI just a little bit further. You have an agent here, this navmesh agent in our script, and if we go here and we're looking at our AI, we can see that this navmesh agent has a bunch of different variables that we can change. One thing that could be interesting to do is that when you're within range of the player, you change the speed. So you can do like an agent.speed is equal to 10f. And then when you're out of range of the player, you switch that speed back down. So it's like they're sprinting at the player when they see them. And then when they're returning to, to patrol, it's like they're walking back. Something like that. That little tiny bit of detail can go a long way towards tricking the player into thinking the AI is smarter than it is. Because 99% of making an AI in a game is making the player think that they don't know exactly what the AI is going to do. So that attention to small details can make all the difference in immersion. One of the other things I'd like to discuss with this comes in particular when you have multiple AIs. So I'm going to copy this AI and I'm going to paste it. So I have the same AI and I'm just going to mix up the waypoints here just a little bit so they aren't traveling to the same spot. So we have waypoint two, four, three, and then back to two. So it's going to come here, to here, to here, to here, and just loop between those. We have two separate AI. They both look at the player. They both patrol just like we normally would in our game. You can see that they're both patrolling. The, the nice part about that script is that it'll work on multiple AI. The thing that it, it doesn't do so well with is that if both AI are chasing the player, they both collide with each other. And that's not really an issue for me right now because I have no colliders on things. But if you have colliders on your enemies or your enemies share an animation, they'd be clipping together and it gets really wonky. And this, this type of AI doesn't do well as soon as, as soon as they start clipping together. So next week, we're going to go over a way to sort of manage both of those, all those AI sort of clumping together. And we're going to go over a way to make it so when one AI sees you, he calls all the rest of his, his buddy AIs to come help you, to help chase you. So imagine you're making a zombie game and one of the zombies spots you. You'd be able to quickly relay to all the rest of the zombies, hey, the, the players over there we want to go chase the player, and then all the zombies will chase the player, but do it in an intelligent manner so that they're not standing on top of each other like these two do when you get close to each other. Like, we don't want them bumping into each other, so we want to have them flock in an intelligent manner. So that's next week. I hope you'll join us for it. As always, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. It really does help us out. If you haven't already, check out the link in the description below to join our Discord. Don't forget to follow us on Twitch, all that jazz. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next week.